in 1987. The then Prime Minister of Australia, Bob Hawke, in his Governor-General's address stated, by 1990, no Australian child will be living in poverty. While 30 years on, the poor children of that time have grown up and we see some of them begging at major road intersections. We see some of them sleeping at the back of factory units and we see some of them in their hovels up and down the streets of Perth, Fremantle, Midland and Victoria Park. According to the Mission Australia website, in 2016, there were around 116,000 people experiencing homelessness on any given night in Australia. Of these, 15,800 are younger than 12 years old. But it is not only the homeless who fit into the definition of living in poverty. According to ACOS, in Australia in 2022, there were 3.3 million people living below the poverty line, including 761,000 children. So much for no Australian child living in poverty by 1990. Looking back, it was clearly ignorance on behalf of the government at the time to think they could alleviate poverty in a way no other government had been able to do before them since the beginning of time. For as Jesus said, you will always have the poor with you. Just giving out more money and social security benefits does not alleviate poverty, but instead creates more poverty as it generates generations of dependent people. Brothers and sisters, as the world becomes more and more overcome by sin and darkness, so too does poverty increase, both temporal poverty and poverty of spirit. The more hedonistic our society becomes, the greater the gap between rich and poor, between the haves and the have-nots. Over the millennia, there has been times of more poverty and times of less, but there has never been a time when there has been no poverty. Given this, from the very beginning, God has called humanity to care for the poor. In the book of Deuteronomy and Leviticus, God instructed the people of Israel through Moses that when harvesting from their fields, they were to always leave some behind for the orphan and the widow, for the poor and for the foreigner. In Jesus' description of Judgment Day, he speaks of himself as the poor and naked and sick and in prison who needs food and clothing and visits. Those who respond to his needs are saved, those who don't are lost. In today's first reading from the prophet Isaiah, we hear the same call to the people of God to care for the hungry and homeless, for the naked and the oppressed. Brothers and sisters, God commands us to share our bread with the hungry and to provide shelter for the homeless poor, to clothe the naked and not to turn our back on our own flesh and blood. The Second Vatican Council document Gaudium et Spes sums it all up when it says, The Christian who neglects his temporal duties, neglects his duties towards his neighbour and even God, and jeopardises his eternal salvation. On the other hand, we must also be careful not to just get caught up solely in social justice and nothing else. For those who focus solely on social justice but ignore the moral precepts of God, or even worse, their prayer life, Isaiah goes on to warn about the need to be faithful to the Sabbath and all that that entails. So, brothers and sisters, we must show charity to those in need and also give glory to God on the Sabbath through worship, prayer and rest and obedience to the moral precepts of the law. But, brothers and sisters, there is more to this reading from Isaiah than meets the eye. Hidden there, one can find a great blessing from God for those who've fallen deep into sin. I believe these words will in time be seen as a great consolation from God for many in this world gone mad. God tells us through Isaiah, if we do these things, then will our wound be quickly healed over, and again your light will rise in the darkness and your shadows become like noon. St. Peter tells us in a manner more clearly when in his first letter he writes, charity or love covers over a multitude of sins. Brothers and sisters, the ticket to freedom from the burden of one's sins is love or charity. How many times do I encounter people with burdens of sin so heavy that they cannot see the light of day, that they either think God can't forgive all their sins or they can never make good the harm they've done to others? In the words from the prophet Isaiah, 
God gives them the answer to this quandary. Love, charity, do good to those in most need. Give your life for others. Spend your remaining days making up for your sin with acts of love. And all your sins will be wiped away. How wonderful our God is, whose penance for our sins, no matter how heavy or many, is simply to love. And as Jesus told us, you will always have the poor with you, so there will be no shortage of those in need on whom this love can be showered.